Lord of heaven and earth, we just come to thee again in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We just pray that the seriousness of getting right with thee might be pressed upon every soul that's within our, uh, the hearing of our voice. We just pray thy blessing upon thy word now. We think of the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. We know that cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. So we give thee thanks for the sacrifice of thy son. We just pray there might be salvation, that thy name might be glorified, number one. And number two, that there might be souls saved for thy glory and honour. We just ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5 and reading uh, at verse 22, Mark 5 verse 22, verses 22 to 24, And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. So when Jairus saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he fell at his feet. In a posture of worship, that's a good place to be, isn't it? At the feet of the Lord Jesus and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. So his little daughter was dying. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. He came to the right person, didn't he? He knew that the salvation and life was only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, the, the title of the message is, Am I at the point of death? We need to ask ourselves this question. Am I at the point of death? Now, at this point, I want to say we are all at the point of death because we don't know when we will die, but God does. Do you realise that your name has... or, or there is a certain date, certain hour, and certain second that, that is appointed for you to leave this earth? And the whole point about preaching the gospel is, are you ready? Now, we need to be ready to meet the Lord. And so we can only be ready to meet him if we've had forgiveness for our sins. Just go back now to, or over to um, John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 46 to 54. I want to look at that. John 4, verse 46. Obviously, if we haven't had forgiveness, received forgiveness for our sins, we're not ready to meet God. We're not ready to die. But don't forget, we're at the point of death. Any one of us can die at any given moment. So John chapter 4, verses 46 to 54, we want to be reading. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. That was the first miracle that the Lord Jesus ever performed. If you didn't know that, he turned the water into wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. So first of all, we have a daughter, a girl, that was at the point of death. And now we have a son. Heal his son. Here's a boy. Uh, well, maybe he was a man, I'm not sure. For he was at the point of death. So we have the same situation. So we have a girl, or a female, and a male, if you like. And they're both at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. So he knew that the presence of the Lord, if the, if the Lord was there, present, there would be no death in his presence. And that's the case, isn't it? And if you come to Christ, you'll receive forgiveness for your sins. You'll receive eternal life. You'll receive that spiritual and eternal life that we all need to enter into heaven. Receive forgiveness for our sins. Yes, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. That man had great faith, didn't he? He realised that the Lord knew what he was talking about. He knew that the Lord Jesus Christ had the power to heal his son. Verse 51, And as he was now going down, his servants, you know, from the house, servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. 
Then inquired he uh, of them the hour when he began to amend. In other words, when he began to get better. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. That's what God wants to do for you. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants you to be born in, into his family through faith in Jesus Christ. And himself believed and his whole house. That was great, wasn't it? You know, the, the man believed and, and the whole household was saved because they believed. And this can be your situation this afternoon. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you also can be saved. If to this point you've never believed on the Lord Jesus for your salvation, you need to do it this afternoon. You need to do it right now. Verse 54, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. About 150,000 people die every day. That's 6,250 an hour. So by the time this, this meeting has been over, it'll be 6,250 people who have passed into eternity, passed off the face of the earth. Uh, that's 104 per minute, 1.7 per second. Now we don't know that. Um, now we. Now do we know that the next one uh, won't be me? No, we don't, do we? Honestly, we do not know when we're going to leave this earth. Are you ready to meet the Lord? I want to go now to uh, Ezekiel 33. Back to the Old Testament, Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33 and verse 11. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God. Now note this, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. In other words, he doesn't have any pleasure in the death of those that die without Christ. Because we are wicked in the sight of the Lord if we're not saved. If you're not a child of God, we are wicked in the sight of the Lord. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die? There's no need to die in our sin. We need forgiveness for those sins before we leave this earth. O house of Israel. We know it's written to Israel, to the Jews. In other words, to apply it to us, why will you die physically without forgiveness for your sins when God has provided for your salvation in the person of Christ, being crucified upon the cross in our place on that cross and shedding his precious blood? I want to go now to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 28. Yeah, Luke chapter 10, verse 25, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, that's tempted the Lord Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind and thy neighbour as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Now only the Lord Jesus Christ has kept this in absolute perfection. The only way a person can do this is if they've been born again. Then they have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of them. Even then, they won't keep it in perfection like the Lord Jesus, obviously. Because of the believer's sin, and self-will. Now, Romans 3. We want to go to Romans 3, verses 21 to 25. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 21, uh, 1. But now the righteousness of God without the law 
is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. This is important. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so you can receive the righteousness of God to be able to enter into heaven. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation or mercy seat through faith in His blood. The blood had to be shed of the Lord Jesus to wash our sins away, to declare His righteousness for the remission or forgiveness of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. I believe this is talking about the sins of the past of the saints in the Old Testament who would look forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ who would eventually come and die on the cross for you and for me. Just go back now to the 2 Samuel chapter 14. 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 14. Is 2 Samuel 14 and verse 14 For we must needs die and are as water spilt on the ground which cannot be gathered up again We only get one shot at this life you better get it right you better get right with God before you leave this earth. Neither doth God respect any person. Yet, here's the good news, yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. You see, God has uh, provided eternal life through the sacrifice of his son on the cross. But you've got to take advantage of that. You've got to come to Christ this arvo. You've got to put your faith in him now. If you don't, it may be too late. In one second time, you might, pass from, you might pass from this earth. So we need to be ready to meet God. Let's go back now to Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 20 to 23. shouldn't say back, I should say forwards. Ezekiel's further on. Yeah, Ezekiel 18 verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. This here is talking about the death of the body. The time when our spirit leaves our body. James 2.26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Keep reading, verse 20 of Ezekiel chapter 18. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now here in verse 20 we see our personal responsibility for our own sin before the Lord. We can't be answerable for our mum and dad or, you know, siblings, our brothers and sisters, whoever. We've got to be personally accountable for all of each and every one of our sin. We're personally accountable before God. And we need to have forgiveness for those sins. Verse 21, But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and, will, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Now the only way a person can keep God's statutes or ordinances is by the power of the Holy Spirit when we are saved in this day and age. Verse 22. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. I wonder can God say that concerning you? Because you put your faith in Christ, your transgressions that we've committed shall never be mentioned unto us again. They're completely washed away by the precious blood of Christ. In his righteousness uh, that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure 
at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord, and not that he should return from his ways and live. Now this word live uh, literally means to stay alive. So, you know, to stay alive physically. Um, now to answer the first uh, part of verse 23, have I uh, any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? We'll use another scripture, and I, I actually read this wrong because when it printed out, it printed out actually a bit skew if, and it, it sort of mucked the pages up. So what we're going to do is actually take time to just go through those verses we've already read. I should have read these next verses in Ezekiel 33. Sorry about that. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So here the question is, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? And the answer is, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the uh, wicked should uh, turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? In other words, the provision has been made for you and for me. Putting it in our language, as I said before, the Lord Jesus Christ has been crucified upon the cross and he shed his precious blood for you and for me. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the promise. I won't read all the verses because you might get a bit bored, but I really mucked it up a bit there. I sort of read it in the wrong order. But anyway, you get the gist of the message. We're sinners in the sight of the Lord. As, as usual, we always say that. This is gospel preachers. We need to understand our sinfulness before the Lord. And then you have the remedy that God has made through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, being our saviour, the one that wants to be your saviour this afternoon. Will you come to Christ? It's all about him. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand your position of sinfulness before the Lord, realising the danger that you're in of going down to hell and eventually in the lake of fire for all eternity. Because God doesn't want that, he sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive forgiveness for our sins, but of course, we are going to die. We need to be prepared. Am I at the point of death? The answer is, the short answer is yes, because we don't know when we're going to die. If you go to a cemetery, you'll see babies that have died. You'll see older people, you know, see middle age, you'll see people 50 or 60 or something, and then you also see people maybe 100 years old. It doesn't matter what age they are, people still die. And it's all as a result of sin. And it grieved the Lord at his heart to see that people had died. You know, when he came, he... he he sighed when he came to uh, the grave of Lazarus. Remember that? Because uh, Lazarus was a believer. And he knew that he could raise him from the dead. But he was just sad. Because he saw what the effect of sin did. For the wages of sin is death. That is physical death. But we also know that there is a spiritual death. And you and I, when we're born in this world, we're spiritually dead in our sins and in our trespasses. God wants to make you alive in Christ. God wants you to be born again this afternoon. And if you come to Christ, if you realise your sinful condition called repentance, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then you put your faith in Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants. Am I at the point of death? 